You know who warned about this expensive nonsense years ago? Actually, decades ago? Ron Paul. He said we're not only throwing good money after bad, but it's not our job to buy good or what we think are good relations. To the former presidential candidate, he says, stop the insanity, stop the spigot, stop it all now. Congressman, good to have you. Thank you, Neil. Nice to be with you. And here we face what will be, ironically, tomorrow, talk of $40 million more in aid to Libya. What do you think of that? <laughs> I think you know what I think about it. It's money down, down a rat hole, down the drain, wasteful. We don't have it. We can't hardly borrow it anymore, so we print it. And we can't buy friendship. We buy more enemies. And I've argued that we have only two types of foreign policy we offer. If they do exactly what we tell them, we give them money. If we don't, uh, if they don't do it, then we go and bomb them. But it looks like now we do both. We give them money and they kill us with our money. And I thought your opening statement was fantastic. I thought you were hit the nail on the head on the, the ridiculousness of the foreign policy. It's easy to argue a non-interventionist foreign policy. Mind our own business, keep our own money and be friends with people and trade with people. And I didn't invent it. The founders advised us of that. And that's what our Constitution demands. So I think we should give it serious consideration. You know, Congress and I had uh, Senator John McCain here said, be careful what you wish for, though. Uh, we embolden the radical elements and, and, and by not giving money, uh, we, we, we hurt the modern elements. I want you to listen to what McCain said just a little while ago with me. Okay. I think we have to be judicious as to how we use taxpayers' dollars. But I can guarantee you, if we take action that makes enemies out of that part of the world, uh, we will pay a very heavy price over time. Now, to your point, I think we've already got the enemies. That's what the billions has bought. So I don't know what, what stopping it would bring. But, but yeah, I think, I think that's our business. That's what we do all the time where we're making enemies. I mean, uh, we're in drone warfare any place, any time we want to go. And we overthrow governments when we uh, dis want to dispose of them after propping them up. And then uh, people just get angry at us right now. We're stirring up another fight in Syria and who knows when it'll come to Iran. So it's on and on. We're always building up enemies. And uh, we did that prior to going into Iraq and, and uh, Afghanistan. So it's on and on. I think the approach has to be different. So Senator McCain had a very good point. We, sh we shouldn't be making enemies. But I don't think he understands exactly how you make enemies. And it's our aggressiveness, our imposing our will on other people. We wouldn't put up with it here. The American people would band together and object to it. And we shouldn't be surprised when other countries object to what we do to them. Well, my only worry is if I saw some, uh, you know, productive uses of this money and it's in the, in the world is just a just a, a loving uh, audience of American worshipers, I might think about it, Congressman. But leaving that aside that it hasn't happened, leaving the other little detail side that we, we, we are we are broke and we don't have the money to, to strategically invest uh, generally or otherwise. Why do we keep doing it? To what end? Well, you know, it, it, it dumbfounds me because it doesn't meet the criteria of a, a little bit of a common sense. It makes no sense whatsoever. But I think we were able to get away with it for so long because we had the privilege of issuing the reserve currency of the world. We have had and still have the, high, the strongest military power, and we still have a lot of economic wealth. And we think we can get away with it. So we've been lulled into this belief that we're invincible. And I think it's been a moral hazard because I think all of a sudden we're going to wake up and we'll find out that we are invincible, that people can retaliate. And uh, it's third, uh, it's a fourth generation warfare. It's not governments against governments. It's individuals now. And uh, I don't even think we've adapted to that, that we're still fighting World War II and the Korean War and the Vietnam War in a sense that it's the people who are rising, rising up against this and rebelling against the very government that we prop up. And we think if we send our CIA in early enough, we can take over the new governments, which is proving false because we've aligned, aligned ourselves, you know, with Al Qaeda in Libya and in Egypt. It looks like in Syria as right. well. It's so foolish. I do not understand how people can't wake up and say enough is enough. Let's quit this nonsense. Well, you know, you, you, you can't befriend nuts. They end up just being nuts. Uh, but you, you know, you were decades ahead of this, Congressman. It's always a pleasure having you, sir. Ron Paul, uh, of course, the former presidential 